Welcome to the e-commerce growth show brought to you by Segmentify. Well, hello and welcome to the third series of the e-commerce growth show. And um, I'm really excited today because we are moving to a vlog format, as you can see. So uh, this is my first, uh, my first one, actually. So just to give you a quick summary, um, the first series that we did was a technology partner series that we did with Chloe Thomas of the e-commerce master plan. And that was really exciting. That sort of springboarded the, the show off, really. And then I took a lot of the best practice from Chloe, which was great. And then we designed the second series, which happened to coincide with the COVID uh, pandemic. And there were a lot of people that were in need of support in terms of uh, you know, getting a new role um, or taking, uh, you know, getting more consultancy services and so on. So uh, we were able to interview those guys and that was, that was fantastic to support them. And then we thought, well, what, what do we want to do next? So we, we had a chat internally and we thought, you know, we've got uh, 350 customers now uh, in 26 countries. And we thought that, you know, what's the best thing we can do uh, to do something a bit fresh, a bit different around personalization. And uh, so we had a chat to some of our customers and thought, well, why don't we reveal, if you like, um, some of the best practice and some of the challenges that they've been overcoming using Segmentify. Um, so that's what this series is about. Um, it's all about thought leadership in, in that respect. And um, in this episode, I'm really excited to introduce one of our customers um, called Inish Pharmacies. And uh, one of the owners there called Paul O'Hay. Now, Paul is a pharmacist by trade, if you like. And uh, as I mentioned, one of the owners and directors of uh, Inish Pharmacy. And that is a group of pharmacies based in County Donegal in Ireland. And uh, so he is a trained pharmacist, as I mentioned, but he heads up the digital side of the business and is our kind of key contact with our customer success team uh, for Sumanify. And he's helped grow the InishPharmacy.com side of the business into one of the leading pharmacy e-commerce sites in Ireland. So I'm really pleased to uh, invite Paul and uh, hear a lot more about it. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Hi, Phil. Thanks for having me on. Um, well, I'm cool. glad to be glad to be part of the new season on the uh, the new blog style podcast series. So yeah, no, uh, really great. Th thanks for having me. Hey, not at all, not at all. Um, so why don't we start with a bit of an icebreaker as, as we normally do? Um, and obviously, you know, I'm always, I've mentioned this many times, but I'm also, I'm always so excited to hear people that have been involved in, uh, creating businesses and making them successful. I think it's a phenomenal achievement in its own right. But, uh, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about how Inish pharmacies came into being? Uh, and in particular, we were talking about your online journey, having started life as an offline operation in rural Ireland. So we were founded in 2009 um, in Carndonagh in County Donegal. Uh, initially, just the one store, and our digital side of it didn't come on board until after we had moved to two pharmacies. Uh, so another small pharmacy added to it, and eventually we decided we need to have some sort of online presence. Um, like a lot of businesses, our first kind of foray into anything digital was a humble Facebook page. Um, eventually we decided, look, we need our own dedicated site. And at that stage, you know, talking internally, we just felt, look, we don't want a website that's just going to be, you know, like a yellow pages listing. It's just your opening hours and your contact details. If we're going to have a website, we may as well sell to people. Um, one of the attractions to that was being based in a, a more rural area. There's only so much population on our doorstep that we can you know, yep. we can serve or have customers from. Mm -hmm. So we thought, why not just go for it? At that stage, there was no really dominant player in the Irish online pharmacy area. Mm -hmm. uh, so we thought that can be us, or we can certainly strive to be it. So we took a plunge in the e-commerce and kind of never looked back. We tried to do it as best we can, try to bring some of our successful in-store values and bring it to online. So it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, I think a lot of companies, particularly this year, uh, have been looking at getting into e-commerce. They, they maybe found uh, lockdown in their areas or shopping centers closed and they thought, well, yeah, yeah. we can't do business with the shutters down. No. We need to look at e-commerce. So I think more and more people are realizing that, that it's, it's the way to go. Mm. And it, you know, I think every business should, should embrace it really. No, absolutely. 
absolutely. Well, well done, you know, for making, like you say, make, taking that plunge and making it work. Um, obviously, there's loads of questions in, in that sentence alone around, you know, how you went about going online. But, I, you know, let, I, I won't go into that because that's another area. But I, I wanted to, to, to let the guys know that the, the theme for today in general is actually focusing in on uh, customer groups, effectively, we, we call it that. Um, and, and I'm really keen to discuss this with you because, of course, because of that journey that you started in your you know, rural um, offline uh, situation and then you now have both on and offline operations to draw from in terms of how you best serve those customer groups and obviously continually strive to improve how you serve them um, so why don't you dive into that and tell us a little, little bit more about it so I suppose uh, as we grew we, we kind of had to realize look there's different types of people shop with us um, we put a massive emphasis on customer care and service um, in store and we we tried to bring that to, to online as well but as part of that you know to do that as best we can we, we sort of decided we need to really understand why are people shopping with us you know there's a lot more competition out there why do they come to us and why do people keep coming back to us you know so we've over 15,000 reviews on Trustpilot you know mm -hmm. 4.9 out of 5 so we, we knew we were doing a lot of things right but you know, we, we can't just kind of fly blindly. You know, we thought, well, yeah. we need, we wanted to understand it a bit more. So sure. last year we, we undertook a project to, to kind of delve a bit deeper into this. And we done some large scale surveys of all our customers. And we just wanted to find out, not everything obviously, but we wanted to find out different things about them. So what type of customers were they? Mm -hmm. What did they like about shopping with us? What did they yeah. not like? What would they like to see differently? Mm -hmm. um what's important to them you know so behaviorally you know what attracts them to, to stick with a certain company or a certain mm -hmm. uh, brand or you know so we, we kind of try to want to find out a lot of those things yeah. and we've done that with large-scale survey and it, the results were really fascinating to see you know mm -hmm. what motivates people um mm -hmm. and the different sort of customer cohorts mm -hmm. we would have a a wide range of customer types i suppose we we sell everything mm -hmm. from mm -hmm medicines and vitamins to like beauty and skincare to mother and baby mm -hmm. you know so wow. there's a there's a there's a large variety of customers there yeah. some of them will overlap and mm -hmm. some of them won't so it was really valuable for us to try and better understand who those customers were and then mm -hmm. we can sort of try and tailor what we do and what we offer to kind of speak to them and relate to them a bit more yeah makes a lot of sense and actually where there's a I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, you know, in terms of a big mix of, uh, of SKUs or, or products across multiple different kind of verticals almost within your, your site, um, that obviously goes straight into a situation where you're going to have a lot of different type of customer sets and you're going to want to make sure that you are serving the right products or the right content, whatever it might be, um, at the right time to them. So we were talking, you know, b before, and you were mentioning how, you know, it isn't just about segmentify. I mean, 100%. There's so much other amazing stuff that you would have, um, you know, been exposed to in terms of value, circumstances, and so on. Why don't you tell the guys a little bit about some of the more specific things that you found out, particularly from the sort of offline arena, and then how you were trying to then move that to the to the online space. Okay, so offline, you know, especially in store, we've always had a really emphasis on looking after people as in you know can we can we help them are they happier when they walk out the door of the shop than they were when they came in and that's been the kind of really simple foundation of everything we've tried to do and all our staff on the first day that's you know emphasized beyond anything yeah. else is that we look after the customers first and foremost yeah, yeah. um it's difficult to, to take that to online you yeah. know it and we're lucky that we have some really good staff in customer care especially and they, they really do you know try and get that across mm -hmm. um try and do the simple things and you know follow up on things and it sounds really basic but yeah those people do appreciate those things absolutely like everybody that's shopped online at some stage has had a bad experience somewhere mm -hmm. um and there's always certain companies that you've maybe shopped with and you thought you know, I didn't really like that response, not didn't like the response, maybe didn't like how the, mm. you know, the, the whole shopping experience went. 
And I'm not saying we're perfect every time, but we, we do really try and yeah. follow up with people. And if there are things that need to be addressed, we try and fix them. Mm-hmm. So we, we talked about how do we bring that to online. And um, one of the things was trying to have different touch points or different content on the site that can kind of relate to people. So it, it's, it's not necessarily a, you know, an overt sales strategy. It doesn't always have to be about, you know, you know, sales, sales, sales. It's yeah. like, can we have certain areas of the site or certain parts of the site where it's content or product offering or just information that yeah. makes people feel comfortable? Um, yeah. And I suppose if they feel comfortable and they trust us, um, they're more likely to come back and shop shop with us again and use us as uh, a resource both for information and for for product mm. that they need. Mm. No, so one cool. of the things, one of the things that kind of came out in the in the survey that you mentioned was we found out we you know so we have a lot of people who they're maybe carers, they're maybe caring for a family member or mm-hmm. um, you know uh, maybe an elderly person close by or maybe they work as a carer. Uh, mm-hmm. We find that we have a lot of people who are maybe digital parents, they're maybe busy parents, they've mm-hmm. um, hectic work lives and hectic mm-hmm. home lives, and they're trying to fit in stuff in between. And can we make it convenient for them? And, you know, with fast shipping, um, people can rely on it to get there to them. So they maybe were attracted to this for different reasons than, um, say, an elderly person who, you know, was finding they needed help with continence care, but they like to phone someone and speak to them. So it's two different, two very different needs. You know, you might have a digital parent who they want the convenience, they want the speed, they want to be able to do it on their phone at three o'clock in the morning uh, after a feed. Uh, yeah. Whereas someone who's maybe in their 70s, they like to phone in, they like to talk to someone, they like to have the same people know them. So it's yeah. two different very needs, two, the two different um, types of customers and different sort of ways of approaching them. Um, but yeah. we also found out there was a lot of things people found important to them. So we tried to find out, well, mm. is price the most important thing? Is speed of delivery? Um, mm. But one of the surprising things that came back uh, quite prominently was there was a lot of people that they what they said one of the things that was important to them was sort of being environmentally conscious or eco-friendly and yeah. it, it, so we looked into it a bit further and seemed to be there's a there's quite a growing trend for people that want to mm-hmm. support uh, brands and companies that are making environmentally friendly products, less plastic waste, mm. um, more renewable products. Mm. Uh, and we kind of thought, well, let's, let's look into that, you know, as part of our whole um, response to the, the survey. Um, and we kind of try to delve in a bit, bit further to it. So mm-hmm. uh, we thought, well, what can we do that would um, relate to this, this sort of customer cohort or, you know, this sort of persona of a, of a, of a customer. So yeah. we, it was very interesting, you know, as a company, obviously, you know, we try and make steps um, to reduce, you know, impact on the environment, like plastic waste, mm-hmm. um, trying to use recyclable products. But we, um, we, we had the idea then, can we have a, a company that will allow us to support, um, support an environmentally, you know, beneficial project at, that our customers would also like. Um, mm-hmm. So it's kind of good for everybody. Mm. Um, and we felt that this customer segment, uh, if you want to call it that, yeah. that they would kind of relate to it and they could, you know, sort of get behind it a bit. So yeah. that's where we ended up coming back to the sort of data side of Segmentify and using that to kind of solve this problem. That's brilliant. So, so you found this quite interesting segment of, of people. Um, and it's interesting, isn't it? I, I don't know whether what your thoughts are on the kind of growing you know need for people to be environmentally friendly i'd like to hope that perhaps it's education and awareness you know um and uh, in in uh, and and so on um do, do you do you think it's that as well do you think there's any any other sort of factors that have kind of increased that side of the eco-friendly mindset um it's hard to tell i, I would say it gets portrayed in the media as a, a, a young, uh, yeah. you know, young person led kind of not yeah, really yeah. call it a movement, but, yeah. you know, but I would say people of all ages are, you know, becoming more aware. I think it is education. I think it's, um, yeah. you know, there's, there's been big investigative 
journalism pieces that you know have sort of highlighted the impact of particularly plastic waste. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, the amount you know, of plastic uh, waste and deforestation and things yeah, like that. That's it. The uh, the amount of you know coverage, I suppose, now of you know countries taking on other countries' plastic, and you know, I, I saw a program. I think it was on either on the news or something, and I think it was Turkey or Pakistan or somewhere where they were basically receiving tons and tons of our plastic, and then of course, you know, we're humans, right? So they were like burning it. And, uh, you know, it's stuff like that. And, and I think the more that it's covered off like this, and um, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, our household definitely changed over the years from being much more, you know, naive and, and you know, to it. And now we're much more kind of careful, particularly in terms of recycling. Anyway, we make sure we recycle, but also try and keep an eye on packaging. And I've mentioned this a few times in other episodes, but I'm, I'm dumbfounded sometimes at the, horrendous way in which um items are packaged i mean I, I understand maybe in pharmacies there's an element where you've got to have sanitized you know products like i get an inhaler for example you know and yes that's in a box it's in a bag you know it's then in a foil thing i think actually even that you know do you do you have to have the box and the bag and the other box you know and then the, the foil maybe you could just have the foil get that in a bag it, you know it's stuff like that so i kind of hope that it continues to drive forward really you know yeah i think it's a, an evolving conversation there'll always be some products that require a bit more yeah active you know for the for likes of inhalers they do need to be sealed and they need to be secure yeah, but absolutely. there's a lot of products like even even in our own industry like sometimes yeah. you see the stuff and you're, you're going why does it need to be you know why does like six little roll-on deodorants need to have their own plastic tray and then wrapped in plastic you know it's there yeah. has to be better ways of doing it and i think more and more yeah. companies are embracing that obviously it'll take time because yeah. big production manufacturing changes take yeah. a lot of time yeah. and money that's a good point. yeah that's a good point yeah so but people are sort of waking up to it yeah no for sure which is which is great news you know um so, I mean, just going back to then this particular cohort, which, as you say, is growing. It's an important cohort, clearly, um, from, our, from, our, from our chat. Um, what, just talk us through then how you were able to transfer that knowledge, that data, that analysis that you've got into Segmentify. How did you um, realise, if you like, the, the way to serve that cohort better kind of using Segmentify? So we... We came across a, a company, or not a company, um, a not-for-profit organization that basically they plant trees. They, yeah. they plant native trees uh, all across Ireland. And yeah. it, it's very simple in its mission. Um, we wanted to do something that was kind of transparent. There was no mm -hmm. gray areas. Um, yeah. And there would be people could get behind. Uh, but part of the problem was we, we didn't have the functionality to have, say, um, a donation option at checkout. Um, yeah. We, you know, like any business, you you want to maybe minimize custom development fees that would take time and effort, and mm -hmm. you know, especially on a shared platform like ours, it, it's yeah not always as feasible. So we decided that if there was a way in Segmentify that we could promote this product and as a SKU, we created it as a SKU, a donation mm -hmm. token. Um, how could we kind of get that in front of people that, that mm -hmm. might want to see it? Uh, so we, we spoke to our account manager, Segmentify, and basically we, we, we created a custom SKU, which was a donation token, mm -hmm. um, in multiples of like 25 cents, and people could, could buy them as they needed, add them to the basket. Yeah. And we decided to use a recommendation widget and have a static, um, a static option for mobile and desktop that would always have this appearing very relevant on the um, at the checkout page. So we, we didn't have, it was a new uh, checkout page widget that was created for us. We yeah. didn't sort of, we, we had our, our standard ones you know, uh, that we would have underneath, but we put this very prominently uh, yeah. at the checkout stage on, on mobile and, and desktop. And we were able to um, sort of present that to people um, as they as they've gone through their, their shopping journey and the results of it were really interesting one of the the, the beauties about doing it through Smetify is mm -hmm. you get all the data from the, the back end of it yeah so it, it was really useful and really interesting to be able to, to take a, a delve into to the 
the stats in Trendify, for example, and yeah, yeah. get a look at well, you know, yeah. how often is this being bought? You know, at what rates? How does it compare with everything else? And the the results were were really promising. I would say, you know, yeah. It, it's yeah. been really successful. Um, it, we're going to plant a, a hell of a lot of trees at the end of this year as a result of it. So. <laughs> Um, that's that's nice good, time. you know. And our, our yeah. customers have, you know, have embraced it. You know, yeah. those customers that are environmentally conscious and they want to feel like they're making some sort of difference. They've, yeah, no, completely. They, they've 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 rode in behind it. Yeah, I mean, interesting. You mentioned then about Trendify or the the reporting side of the data side of, of Segmentify. What what sort of data, you know, what sort of metrics, if you like, did you? kind of you know have a look at and, and to understand that you know this is this is definitely helping us as a business to serve this particular cohort better well what we find when we looked at say some of our top performing products yeah. you know by by quantity and by revenue yeah uh, we find some of those products they would maybe when they were out at the basket they would maybe convert at say you know about 35 percent um, yeah. of baskets yeah. But what we found when people added the the donation token for trees on the land, yeah, we found that those customers would convert at about seventy percent. Really? So it was it wow. was a massive difference. So um, yeah. obviously the people who are adding at the basket, it, you know, we can take from that straight away that they're much more likely to check out than yeah. complete the purchase. Um, mm. You know, if they, if they are adding that product, it's it's something that they are yeah. motivated to do and i suppose it's not motivated by something that they will necessarily get in return like a product it's something yeah. that they are doing yeah. to make a difference yeah. uh, and so yeah. you know so that is refreshing to see uh, but it also it sort of gives us an indication that people have a strong affinity for you know a cause like that um yeah yeah no absolutely um, we just got to think of some more now. That's <laughs> to it. Some other se segments, you know. Um, That's so, it. Yeah, and, and did so in terms of that particular um, segment again, where you now know that they are basically an eco-friendly um, buyer, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. Do you do anything else in terms of follow-up on the email side with respect to that particular cohort, or does it sort of end there on the on the checkout? No, we, we can then take that and what we've started to do is tagging certain products as like an eco-friendly product. So it might yeah. be companies that have a strong commitment to recycling, yeah. to, you know, less packaging, to sure. yeah. refillable type products. So yeah. we can then take that data and then, you know, present other products to them that they would you know, quite possibly have a, a, an interest in. Yeah. Uh, it might, it might be bamboo to his brushes or it could be, yeah. you know, it could be anything that's, you know, that's, yeah you know interested in having a positive impact on the environment so yeah, yeah. you can take that data then and, and sort of yeah. follow it up yeah. yeah 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 do you do you do that yourself like through mailchimp or anything like that now or yeah we we, we do yeah. that at the minute so we're we're tagging products at product level um yeah refinement options so that they can you know easily sort of identify them as um like an environmentally friendly product yeah. uh, and then we can then we can then send targeted mail campaigns to those particular customers with you know more relevant products which i suppose is you know the key thing in personalization as we all know it's it's getting the most relevant products to the relevant yeah. customer sets. yeah absolutely i mean using that machine learning that you're you're getting to you know convert those cohorts as you were saying and then using that same information to try and drive other offline channels, you know, like push notification or, or email. Do you, do you use any sort of push notification campaigns as yeah, well? Yeah, we, we've, we've tried to embrace, uh, you know, as many aspects of the Cementify platform as possible. So we, we use some push notifications. We've all the sort of yeah. your standard, you yeah. know, order follow-ups, you know, your, yeah. your back in stocks, they're, they're, they're very handy. They, they just, yeah. it's great to have them running in the background. Um, yeah. But the, I suppose it, it'll not even end there when it comes to Segmentify because mm. because it's machine learning, we can rely that, you know, it will it will learn that people who are mm. making this donation, for example, you know, they'll also start to like to buy these mm. products that we've tagged as, you know, and even in the recommendations, it'll start to show them mm. more eco-friendly products because they've shown an interest in, in, in buying absolutely um, yeah and buying all the ones so it's it's yeah. it, it's great especially for um like every business has it's 
time pressures and staff pressures. So it's it's especially in a you know an SME like ourselves. Yeah, it's it's great to kind of know yeah. in the back of your mind that yeah. personalization and and yeah. relevant recommendations are being looked after in the background. Absolutely. I mean, it's all, as you know, I mean, you you went through your rigorous testing before you chose us. You know, and we're we're a very passionate team, very privileged really to have you know such clever engineering under the bonnet um as you know you know morat um is a is a is a phd you know lecturer in, in machine learning and built the whole team um off the back of that um kind of you know learning and uh the team he's got now are all his students pretty much developing and pushing the product forward every day which is just a fantastic place to be and obviously because the the background to the the, the algorithms were actually originally in cyber security um the when they pivoted it to uh you know some clever one of morat's friends a clever entrepreneur just thought hold on a minute if we pivot this to e-commerce we're we're really going to help because of the speed effectively and the, the learning accuracy um you don't have any you, you don't even have milliseconds you know to to detect a, a fraud a, a network hack um so when you've only got sort of millisecond stroke minutes if you're lucky on a website um, it's obviously critical that you're learning super, super quick. Um, so, of course, like you say, if you just clicked on a um, environmentally product or any of the products that you were talking about in the particular cohorts of customers that you know you have, whether it's like you say that carer or that um, that, that mum or whoever, that then really you want an immediate step change in the way in which associated or, or complementary or products that you think they're likely to be interested in whilst they're browsing in that very very short space of time so that, that's what we continually find and so um excited really to be able to help brands to to do that um one thing i was going to ask you actually is so obviously we have an on-site search kind of widget at the moment um, i'm not actually sure whether you use that um but we're also developing that out into a merchandising tool if you like so with lots of products and lots of different cohorts and, and so on how do you currently merchandise at the in category level or yeah you know how do you how do you how do you currently sort of merchandise your your category pages so that they're relevant you know i don't know in terms of certain products that you really need to be visible all the time versus ones that you don't really you'd rather suppress actually in terms of them being shown up in a recommendation all the time so you don't need to have it do you know what i mean how do you well, do that it, like we would have i suppose we have about seven and a half thousand products on the site at the minute so it's yeah um you just can't do it manually you know no. there's obviously certain key ones that you might put um that you want to have always further to the top yeah uh, all, all our category pages one of the things it's very simple but it works very well is the the top sellers the widgets that we would have at, at across the top Kind of take okay. care of a lot of the kind of hot sellers you know yeah, you, yeah. there's there's certain ones you might want to manually push up a bit and we do yeah. do that yeah but there's other ones that um you know the the best selling uh products in this category which is they just they just yeah. work you know it's, it's really simple they just yeah they make you know you can see the difference that they even make yeah um, there are certain times where we might have different promotions that we want to have say at basket level for example promote certain um it might be seasonal categories mm -hmm. and we'll maybe put filters on those um so those particular product groups are the ones being shown yeah um we, we've dabbled in different things on, on prices now but sometimes we'll, we'll use seasonal uh yeah. products um yeah. to push those particular categories at yeah uh, basket yeah. level no that makes sense um, I, I i forgot actually about the widgets on the actual category pages i think that's 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 really powerful um and then i think on top of that you, you know as as we develop a lot of our customers are are really keen to start to merchandise with the same kind of logic and flexibility you have over things like the widgets to actual category pages you know and search return pages for example and faceted search um so that's a very exciting area that i think with a again with a business with seven and a half thousand products that would be really beneficial, I think, in terms of even more uh, kind of um, intelligence, if you like, behind the way in which the category pages are actually being viewed by different users within that split second. And um, so, um, yeah, excited to. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of scope that we can do. Uh, one yeah. of the other things we've we've started exploring is the uh, the banner options. 
Oh yeah, you know, so being able to have sort of relevant uh, banners and graphics that will, mm -hmm. you know, relate to certain customer yeah. cohorts. Uh, yeah. And we're we're talking with our account manager about that at the minute. Uh, just trying to delve a bit more into which sort of customer groups that we like this kind of not target but present this information to. Um, yeah. Present different banners, and it might be a banner going to a particular landing page for mm -hmm. um, certain product groups. It might be, it might be. Uh, taking the page it's more informational content but that particular yeah. customer group might find it very interesting yeah um, so there's there's yeah. so there's so much possibilities there so the banners will be something that we want to work yeah. on over the next sort of couple of months sure. get them rolled out in time for peak it's going to be a, a bit of a push yeah. but uh yeah. you know that. that's that's all the this was one of the beauties of it you know you um you've got your big peak seasons and you've got the big build up to it. You try and squeeze as many of these things in as possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, as you say, it's testimony really to being able to be able to sort of work alongside our customer success team. So you don't have to do it all by yourself. You know, we, we work together yeah. with kind of extension of you, which sounds like it's pretty useful, especially when you come up to peak and you, you won't have the time to do it all yeah, yourself. Well, well previously using Sigmatify, we were using one of the other major personalization mm -hmm. platforms and yeah, you know, one of the main differences with Segmentify that we find is that having the, the regular meetings with our account manager every month, you know, yeah. and then you can get more if you need within that, yeah. but yeah. certainly every month you review everything, you make the changes yeah. and that, you know, you just don't maybe see that with other platforms that, you know, it's yeah. very easy in a busy environment to just leave stuff and say, oh, I'll do that later. But yeah. when you have someone who's going to be following up on it, uh, right. with meeting notes and action plans yeah. it makes it a lot more you know doable it makes it a lot more you know relevant in your yeah. kind of day-to-day -day, uh, environment and you need that sort of uh partnership essentially you know it's it's yeah definitely we like, found we found that um time and time again as part of the kind of value proposition you like you know we're talking to brands uh, um you know what's shone through all the time is the fact that you know we we're a very frictionless solution you know, especially at the kind of evaluation stage because i suppose i don't know maybe the culture of, of segmentify we need to earn our strikes before we do anything and um and so what, what we do is as you, as you know is we have this kind of mandate internally that is that we we have to drive up to well at least 20 percent of revenue contribution through the platform, through the various tools that we have, whether that's on-site product recommendations, a proportion of that 20%, in fact, I think it's 10%, you know, whether it's on-site search, push, or, or the email campaigns that you send out through MailChimp or, 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 or whoever. Um, and the interesting thing about that is because those, that team is tasked with driving that optimization, you automatically get that level of um proactiveness effectively you know it's working with you because it's it's you know it's not to be blunt but like their wages kind of depend on it. and i don't think that's a bad thing you know it's driving the business forward in the right way for the customers in the right way um so that actually by saying that when we go to market we are going to drive 20 percent if you use our tools of revenue contribution that's a groundbreaking industry leading number you're going to have to have a team behind that to, to, to say, do you know what? We're actually delivering that. And it's not some baloney at some sales guy, you know, talking about it. Um, so that, that I found really, really encouraging. And, and I'm really glad that that sort of filters through to the front line when, when we're having this chat. Um, just, just finally sort of diving over onto the Bannerify side or Bannerify or whatever, um, and content in, in, in general as well. It's, it's of, of, of obviously a growing area, a very, very important area to differentiate uh, in terms of being a brand and not just a, 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 an online you know seller if you like that that ability to differentiate and um and one of the things that um we're doing to try and help with that and you mentioned sort of different banners for potentially different cohorts that then go to different landing pages that's an interesting comment because one of the things that we're working on at the moment is an integration with a content um creator creation profile uh, uh technology if you like called styler i'm sure you've probably heard of um but uh, there's a few of them out there but with styler in particular you know um it, it's a it's a good little product um it's it's well kind of um it's well situated i suppose in in terms of our product as well 
Um, and so one of the things you mentioned in terms of uh, serving a different landing page, for example, to a different segment, we're, we're actually working on that exact scenario right now with them on integration. So the idea is that you might have an eco-friendly uh, cohort or a VIP cohort or a lapsed customer cohort. And you want to, first of all, identify that, send it over to Styler, say, and then you've created a content page for that particular cohort, which if it's, for example, it was a VIP segment, um, then you would probably have that new range or peak thing or whatever it might be, whatever the sort of uh, campaigns that you drive. And there will be a certain different set of products out of your SKU set that you will be showing to that, particular uh, to that particular cohort on that landing page. But for a different one, say a bargain hunter, then you want the same campaign, but you don't want to be showing the same VIP products to non-VIP segments. So this is idea of being able to spin up, let's say for argument's sake, five different content landing pages for five different segments. And then you can then drive your campaign knowing that each of those cohorts, as we pick them up, will be driven to the same type of landing page but with a slightly different um, set of products or messaging on it that will be better and tailor-made for that particular cohort. So, yeah, that, that sounds fantastic. Like it would be, at the end of the day, it's trying to have that relevant product set or product offering and the, the relevant um, information and content for people that, that they're mm -hmm. going to be interested in. You know, the, yeah. we want the people to stay on the website and we want them to come back to it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. anything that, that can make it personalized, um, personalized pages for the particular uh, product or particular. Yeah. Uh, customer groups, then it, yeah, I'm all for it. You know, it, oh, awesome. it, and something that makes it yeah, a seamless integration that makes it mm. easy to, to roll out and, and adjust and, and yeah, tweak and just adapt. gives you speed. You know, that's, you, that's what you need. Like, yeah, I mean, it gives, just gives you some speed to be able to go to market with some of this stuff. You know, and it's the same with like the idea of behind shoppable content. You know, the the ability to be able to knock up a blog, but you don't really want to just knock up a blog that shows information. And then you can't really easily continue the customer journey because yeah. sometimes they're, they're often dead ends or you have to manually create it. And then if you've got seven and a half thousand products, all of a sudden you're manually creating something that then goes out of stock temporarily or something and it goes to a 404 or, or whatever. So it's the same idea as better, as you know, this anyway, we interrogate the, the entire site, if you like, when we build our widgets and place them in the, the divs and so on. And it's the same as if you have you know, content pages that you want, you know, real time one to one product recommendations kind of floating into um, so that you don't have to manually create them and get the best out of the customer journey from the content as well. Because um, do, do you, you, have you got plans to sort of develop content in general? And it's been more of a time thing because you've got so much other stuff it's, to do. It's, it's more of a time thing. We, we've, yeah. we have a lot of different plans and sort of drafts you yeah. know, already prepared, but it's, it, like any small business, it's yeah. it's getting the time to sort of roll these out. Yeah, um, so sure. Anything that kind of makes it a bit more seamless. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm yeah. always interested in it. it. Makes it a bit more oh, totally. uh, less totally. time pressure. Absolutely, and you know, I really appreciate our chats because we yeah, we learn so much. I mean, around the merchandising developments, the on-site search developments, uh, things like style and the content side. You know, it's all we're all driving it to try and make your life easier and easier in inverted commas, you know, within that particular area. And of course, lean on us more and more uh, to be able to drive those gains for you, you know. Um, well, listen, um, that was um, really, really cool. Really enjoyed um, chatting our first vlog of the of series three. So I'm super chuffed. And um, so what's the, what's the kind of best way that our viewers can get in touch with you, Paul? You know, in terms of best practice, segmentify, um, personalization in general, or you know, inish as a business. What's the best way for guys to get in touch with you? Uh, for me personally, you know, you'll you'll get me on LinkedIn or uh, yeah. my email is paul at inishpharmacy.com. You'll find Inish Pharmacy on all yeah. our social channels. Just at Inish Pharmacy, yeah. you can kind of get a, a, a flavor for some of the stuff we're doing. Um, yeah. We're trying to we're trying our best, as to say. <laughs> we'll never get we'll never get everything perfect, but. We, yeah. we get a good stab at it. You know, um, we have a great team uh, that really work yeah. hard to, to look after customers. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, customers seem to respond well to it. So hopefully, yeah. uh, you know, over the next 12 months, we can keep sort of pushing out a few new uh, product offerings, uh, yeah. service offerings, and we can keep, keep driving things forward a bit. Fantastic. Fantastic. And so uh, not, not to put on the spot, 
but just do you have one little nugget or one key takeaway, one, one thing you want to let the viewers know, anything you want about life, about best practice, positization, whatever you want. Um, a bit of a, a wide, uh, wide ranging question there. That's I would it. say, you know, for any <laughs> business who's doing retailing is, it sounds very cliche and simple, but can you do the basics right? And for yeah. the orders that you have, look after those customers, do yeah. it fast, do it transparent, do it, you know, nice and reliable. And once you have the basic right, you know, a lot of those people will hopefully come back to you. And some people can get a bit distracted by fancy bells and whistles and, you know, they don't maybe, you know, look after what they've already got and that's your existing yeah. customers. And yeah. that yeah. would be my main thing is do the basics right and yeah. take yeah. it from there. hundred percent. And it's funny, actually, my boss has a similar mindset and he, he says, I think it's don't, don't do any magic, you know, don't like do a few things really, really, really well. And when you detect you're kind of coming out of that circle and you're doing some magic, like, you know, um, don't do it. You know, when you find yourself diluting out that kind of core focus, um, do a few things really, really, really well. Don't try and spread yourself too thin. Um, it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? But um, yeah, I yeah, think so. no, that's, that's really great, Paul. Thanks so much. So, yeah, I mean, as I say, thanks for the chat. It's amazing. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this maiden um, vlog of, 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 our, of our third series. Um, and uh, I know I always said on, on the back of the podcast and stuff, but if you, uh, if you want to support us, you know, we really appreciate it. Any feedback, um, any topics or questions, or you want to be on the show, uh, give me a shout anytime uh, at phil at segmentify.com. Um, and if you can, uh, I don't know, add any comments or leave any reviews and so on, uh, we're always really, really keen to uh, hear what you, you think about it. All right. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you once again, Paul. It's been lovely to speak to you. Thanks a million, Phil. It was uh, great to be part of it. Uh, very interesting. Uh, it's always nice to have these sort of chats. And, you Absolutely. Know, Absolutely. We can always pick up different, different bits from it. Oh, completely. Yeah. And take care, everybody. And we will speak to you again very, very soon.